I've seen western versions of a curfing plane being made, and I thought I'd try an experiment to make a Japanese style one that cuts on the pull stroke. Because I wanted the distance for the curve to be about 3 eighths of an inch, I needed a block of wood that was about 1 inches thick. Traditionally you'd want to use quarter sawn wood for a project like this, but I don't have any, so sometimes you gotta use what you have. Once the rough dimensions were cut from the oak board, it was squared up and cut to the final outside dimensions. So the closest thing I had to something like this was a Japanese rabbiting plane. So the proportions are based off of that. The guide part of this plane is 3 eighths of an inch thick and the area that's gonna get rabbited out is one inch deep. Originally I was going to use that Japanese rabbiting plane, but I ended up roughly sawing out that rabbited area first. It kind of worked out because I ended up using that piece later as a guide. Once it was rough sawn out, the rabbited area was squared up to the reference line with the hand plane. Here's where that cutout piece came in handy. I made it 3 eighths of an inch thick, squared it up, and then used it as a guide to cut the saw blade slot. You're gonna make a half inch deep groove that you can hold on to and help pull the plane. The bit I'm using is a 5 eighths inch Forgener bit. Cut your sacrificial blade to 10 and 3 quarter inches in length and 1 and a half inches in width. Also, don't be a dummy like me. Uh, wear your gloves when you're cutting this saw blade. This blade is from one of those general purpose disposable Japanese pull saws. After you mark where you want the screws to go, put the saw blade in and drill till you mark the saw blade with a bit. So it was real easy to cut the metal with the tin snips, <laughs> but drilling it out is a real pain. So start with a small drill bit and then incrementally work your way up to the diameter of the saw screw. When you're drilling things out, remember one side of the hand saw screws has a larger diameter than the other. If you end up making this, do yourself a favor with these holes. Start with the larger Forzner bit for that largest diameter, and then do the smaller diameters. All that's left now are a couple finishing touches and put that saw blade in. <laughs> All right, let's test this baby out. The first thing I noticed was the teeth on the saw blade I used was configured more like a crosscut blade. It did well on the end grain, but the teeth got clogged up a little on the full length rip. I might try finding a cheap Ryoba. That way I can try using the ripping side of the saw for another plane. Well thanks for watching. Barda's shop dog outtakes are next. If you could help us out by liking and sharing the video, I'd really appreciate it. Get out there and make something with what you got, and we'll see you next time.